Good morning, and welcome to today's episode of Wednesday in the Woods. This week, I want to talk about why modeling projects fail. And they fail in two ways, in my opinion. The first way is that they fail in research and development. And this begins with the idea that a modeling project should be a project. So in some cases, we have what's really more of an exploratory exercise, right? There's no defined purpose. There's no defined goal. There's no completion or success. In this case, we haven't really started a modeling project. Not to say that there's not value from something like this, but to say that it's not a project. And if we expect to measure it in a traditional sense, then it'll be difficult to see the ROI. The second way that a project fails is if it's not actually feasible. So in many circumstances, Yes, there may be a purpose to a project. It may be defined, it may be a real goal, but it may not be feasible for one or more reasons. It may not be technically feasible. So it <laughs> may just be beyond the possibility of current models to capture information or to predict. There may be an intrinsic degree of randomness or entropy that prevents us from predicting something. It may be infeasible because of the economics. So you might not have the budget for it, or you may just not have a positive ROI after the cost of investment. It may be infeasible because of the timeline. So you may not have enough time to complete the project, even if it were otherwise feasible and economical. You, uh, you may, even if all of those things are true, simply not have the legal right to do so. Or even if you do, it may be politically difficult uh, or socially infeasible from a public relations perspective. So in many ways, projects can have a defined goal, can have um, some partial feasibility, but one of these alone can be enough to shut down a project. Many, many, many projects fail at this stage. And so it's important when you start out on a modeling project to ensure that you've done a thorough review of all of these different types of feasibility before you invest further. So let's assume that we have a project with a defined goal with feasibility analysis performed. Now, this is a little bit endogenous, but we need to make sure that we have the right stakeholders assigned here. So people like to, to frame org structures and stakeholders in lots of different ways. Let's just assume that you've determined your, your RACI or your RC, right? The responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed parties in your organization or potentially outside your organization. Failure to, to properly define stakeholders or have an org structure in place is another common source of, of failure for modeling projects. So a project may have gotten this far. It may have stakeholders who have taken part in a process of assessing feasibility. And those um, stakeholders may have assessed feasibility in the context of a defined goal. Next, we need to resource the project. And even organizations that may have the budget technically, um, financially have the budget, uh, don't necessarily allocate the right people at the right time with the right skills or for long enough. And so organizations can have it all in the sense that they have the budget, they have the, the problem uh, is clear to them, they define the problem, they assign the stakeholders, but if they don't keep the right resources with the right skills, on the project for the right amount of time, then they'll frequently see failure as a result. That's research and development, right? That's the process of defining the project, researching, and, and then developing the project as they, uh, the assigned resources follow our cinephim mm -mm -mm portion of the mnemonic from two weeks ago. But as you'll remember, the last part of our cinephim mnemonic is p p p production, where our risks are not research and development risks, they're real world risks. And real world risks take a number of different forms. So let's assume that the team assigned to develop the model did a good job of selecting a model, of uh, testing the model with the data they were given by stakeholders, of assessing hyperparameters, they properly docked the model in production, the online um, training uh, or retraining framework of the model is implemented appropriately. The test data may 
simply not have been the right test data for a variety of reasons. The stakeholders or the SMEs engaged may have um, uh, not properly obtained the data and that it might not be representative of the real world that the company operates in. The data might simply not have had enough variation in the sample, or it may not have uh, captured rare events or exogenous factors that either do occur infrequently or that obviously might not have occurred at all in the historical sample. Common reasons for failure in the real world when a project goes live. The other reasons that projects often fail involve uh, failure to measure. So have we measured the project in the sense that do we have a way of measuring its benefits and its costs? Frequently, we may be able to measure the direct costs of operating a project but it may be difficult to measure the benefits. The benefits may sometimes be direct and financial, in which case they're measurable um, through some, some effort, or they may be indirect benefits, or they may simply not be financial benefits, in which case stakeholders, depending on their, their incentives and alignment, may simply pull the plug on a modeling project in the real world, in production, because its benefits can't be clearly shown to outweigh its costs. It happens and, and it's a shame. And so it's important again, going back to the beginning of the process, that the stakeholders responsible for the modeling project identify that risk up front and work with any other uh, parts of the organization or external stakeholders to ensure that that's a, an expectation that's set from the outside. The last reason that modeling projects fail is arguably the most interesting and one that I think is relevant potentially for the Zillow news in the last two weeks. Sometimes you do everything right, but you yourself, by participating in the market or by taking your model into production and changing your own behavior, change the very world that you modeled and built your model on. So you may change your own behavior, your own organization's behavior by implementing a model. You may change the way people work in a way that affects the model's ability to appropriately predict. You may change others' behavior. So others may observe your behavior. Uh, for example, in financial markets, you might get front run. In other markets, your behavior may cause others to copycat, or others may simply retract from the environment that you're operating in if it becomes clear that you have an unfair advantage. Those two examples, I think, are the most difficult to, uh, to address and frequently require not just a traditional machine learning or statistical modeling approach, but also some type of qualitative or quantitative simulation of the actual implementation of your model into a real world environment. Because a failure to uh, understand how your production usage of the model may impact others can invalidate everything else that you do along the way. Critical to think through that last fact. And so as we, uh, as we get ready for the end of the fall here and we continue to clean up, I think the last thing to remember is that no matter why a project fails, or even if a project succeeds, it's important to take what you've done in the project, again, failure or success, and to learn from it. To, if you will, compost the nutrients of that project into the future learnings of your organization so that next time your projects are more likely to create value and more likely to succeed. And with that, I hope you all enjoy the fall here and I need to get back to raking up the forest. See you next week.